most notable change from the Archean world to the Proterozoic world was the change in the atmosphere. The Archean atmosphere was like one of the early planets in the solar system, dominated by carbon dioxide and methane. And now we know our atmosphere is made up of nitrogen and oxygen. Well, how did that happen? It's not an easy task to do. Oxygen is a highly caustic element, and we know of no other body in our solar system that has appreciable oxygen in the atmosphere. Well, the first clue to unraveling it was for geologists to figure out how can we pinpoint when the oxygen entered the atmosphere, when can we date that change. And the way we do it is with minerals. Minerals are, of course, composed of different elements, and some of those elements, like iron in particular, are highly reactive when in the presence of oxygen. Iron exists in two states, in a ferrous form, which is reduced, which means it's soluble, it can be in the waters, and an oxidized state, where it's lost an electron. And that oxidized iron is not soluble, and so it joins with other elements to form minerals. What I'm sitting on here is a pile of rocks that came out of the mine, and these rocks are banded iron formation, one of the key rocks of the Archean and the Paleoproterozoic time in Earth's history. They're called banded iron formation because the rocks are made up of alternating bands of iron-rich minerals and silica-rich minerals. The iron-rich minerals here are magnetite, which you can test very easily with a magnet in the field. These alternating layers really show up underneath a microscope where you can see the clear quartz grains separated by the opaque iron minerals. But the question still remains, what caused that iron to be oxidized in the first place? On the very early Earth, in this iron-rich ocean that dominated the planet, the primary question becomes who or what oxidized this iron to make it drop out to form these banded iron formation rocks. And the who or what comes down to biology. And if we think about biology, this is before the planet had plants and animals and fungus. The biology was microbiology. It was single-celled organisms that were happily doing their thing in a very reduced world or a reduced environment with no oxygen. There were three possible ways that oxygen could form that could bind with the rich, the iron two rich ocean to make iron three hydroxides. And those would be the first would be cyanobacteria, where cyanobacteria evolved the capability to split water. And when they split water, they're producing oxygen and they're fixing carbon. But it's the splitting of water and the release of oxygen into their little micro environment that becomes a critical thing because the iron that's iron two is going to be oxidized rapidly to iron three and drop out of solution. A second way would be for microaerophilic organisms like Gallinella. Gallinella is a proteobacteria that takes iron 2 to iron 3 and forms iron hydroxides that coat the sheaths of these cells. It forms this bright orange precipitate that will also drop out and pull the iron out of solution. A third way is anoxygenic phototrophs that are living down in the water column and they're taking reduced compounds as a source of electrons and they're oxidizing the iron from iron 2 to iron 3 and that's dropping out however they're not producing oxygen. Those three things are working to remove the iron from the ocean and as the iron gets removed once it's gone there's no place for the oxygen to go but up and it's going to go into the atmosphere and become an oxygen rich atmosphere and that's what we breathe today.